Hey, kia ora. Helen Brahms here coming live from Sun City in Arizona. Hope you've all had a super fantastic, sparkling, magic Monday. Yes, so what was magical about your day today? My day was magical in the sense that my energy stayed high all day, did not need a lunchtime nap, um, and I just had an amazing day. It was just one of those days that just flowed beautifully and not very many hiccups along the way. It was just a, it was an easy working day, even though, a, but still a lot of work got done. So it's just the way the day flowed, and that was what's what, what made this day very, very magical. Um, so what made your day magical today? So we, um, like I said, we had a very flowing day today. My list of 27 items that I had to do for a client this morning got completed. I was like, yes, we got it done. <laughs> 27 items on a to-do list done in three and a half hours. Yes check that day off <laughs> then i got on the help on the help chat and had a nice flowing day there were some quiet moments the quiet moments from the chat in there but i had other work that i had to do as well so i was able to get that done um yes i was able to get that done can't say any more about that <laughs> during breakfast and my lunch hour um and then just a few minutes for a few minutes after i finished today i was reading some more of that book um one. Oh yeah, three times removed the genealogy story the one that has a little bit of superstition in it um not superstition yeah is that the one superstition no it wasn't superstition what's another word supernatural that was the other one that was the word um it's really it's getting really really good in fact it's hard not to get up from this set because it's on my computer here yes i could transfer it to my phone but then i'm like holding my phone like here to read it or back here and i'm like constantly having to swipe because it's such a small screen i could put it on my kindle yes but with my kindle right now i'm reading another series of books in the order that they're supposed to be read in in the reading order and i don't want to upset the reading order on that if that makes sense probably makes absolutely no sense whatsoever because <laughs> if i go back and read the um want to read the series again i want to make sure that the books are all in order so i just start at the bottom of the list and work my way back up um yeah but this series might take a it's gonna take a while to finish because there's like 70 books in the series so far but it's from there's like this author has like four different she has the main one and then she has like four different spin-offs and what she's done is she's created a list of the reading order so you might be reading book one from over here and book three from over here and, and she has them in the order that the events happen so you're reading through and I thought well that kind of makes sense and then I was reading one book and I was reading the epilogue of one and it had jumped ahead a year and it basically told you kind of hinted to what was coming in the other books and I'm like between that one and the one that takes place in a year's time and I'm like well I don't know if I want to know that <laughs> So, but they're my evening reads, so um, the ones that I only read when I go to bed. So, but this one is really, really good. Um, we're finding out what happened to the, um, so this woman in 2015 is researching her ancestors. She's, fa um, she found the 12th of May is a very important, significant date. It's because in 1883 the funeral of a friend of um one of her ancestors um it was the funeral of her friend at 12 o'clock in the afternoon on that particular day on the 12th of may 1883 fast forward to the 12th of may 1909 is when her um great great grandfather who she's trying to find the information about when he had his funeral and it was his daughter's best friend that had the funeral back at you know in um 1883 and then on the 12th of may 2015 at the same time at 12 o'clock so these are all taking place at 12 o'clock she finds his tombstone in the in the um in the cemetery she actually trips over it um because it's a very old neglected forgotten about cemetery and the church is even all boarded up and falling to pieces and all of that sort of stuff so the whole thing's been like abandoned um 
but there's all the stuff that happens and all these events are kind of are connected along that same timeline of 12 noon 12th of may different years apart um but back in the 1883 um the great great grandfather's daughter's best friend got was buried that day it was her funeral um and she could and as the daughter alice is standing there watching what's happening on with the coffin being loaded into the ground and all that she looks up and she sees this girl that looks like her standing across the, the cemetery and she's standing there with, with this shadowy figure of a woman and they wave to each other well then you fast forward to 2015 <laughs> and the mother takes her daughter alice who also happens to have the same name um to the cemetery because the daughter's interested in this um, research her mum's doing and she turns around and she looks and she can see herself standing at this funeral that was taking place and um so it was kind of like okay that's a little eerie and she was describing to her mother what this child what this little girl wore about the fact that she looked like her and then the mother finally opened the trunks remember me telling about the trunks so they finally got the trunks open and the daughter's looking through the contents of the trunk and go and tells the mother these are the boots and the coat that that girl was wearing that i saw at the funeral um and so it's kind of like all these little connections taking place and uh, and uh, the cool part is, is that we're hearing the stories of as they happened in those times because we flip between the time zones. So we know that in 2015, this woman is um, is researching her family history. She's got stuck with her great great grandfather. Um, can't seem to get back past him. She's found his tombstone, which is awesome. Um, but now she's working with a genealogist, and the genealogist has pointed out there's a child missing. And she's like, what do you mean? She says, well, they got married in this year and they didn't have their son, William, until I think it was like three years later. She said, that doesn't happen back then because they didn't have contraception back then. So it's basically you get married and within within that first year, you've had a child. So she said, there is actually a child missing from this information that we've got so far. And they're like, oh, because she's looking at the tree that the woman's written out. And she says, so there's actually a child missing. We need to find that child and what happened to them. So when we go back to 1883, we're following the story of this child, this missing child and what happened to her. And so it's kind of um, interesting to see how that goes and to see if they will be able to solve that mystery. You know, in 2015, 150 years later, will they be able to solve that mystery? Um, I think that's my math. 130 150 whatever it is over 100 years later will they be able to solve that mystery as to what happened to this missing child that is not on the tree and they can't find birth records for so it's kind of interesting to um so it's sort of like oh they need to go and check this and they need to check that and you know so you're, you're kind of like trying to think ahead um on what sort of research they could be doing where could they go to get the information where could they go to find out that information um so it's kind of exciting in that way and it's all taking place in wales is where it all takes place so it's um, kind of cool and um, i'm just really really enjoying it and i'm so like totally and i've turned the you know turn the page to go to the next chapter and it's like a different year and i'm like no i want to go back. keep telling me what's happening in that keep telling me what's happened back in 1883 she fell asleep on a doorstep what's happened to her and the door opened what happened to her and we just now got back to that but you know about four or five but the chapters are short they're like excuse me, about two and a half to five pages long each chapter. And there's like 80 something chapters in this book. So I'm just under the halfway mark. I'm at like 44% read. And I'm like, oh my gosh. But um, it's a lot of fun. It's a great, great book. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. And this author has others as well. So um, during my 30 day free trial of Kindle Unlimited, I'm gonna see how many books I can get read during that time. Um, and see but yeah but it's a good way to, but i'm finding that the 30-day um, um kindle unlimited that got a promo that got on at the moment is um a great way to go in and try out books you know read the first book of a series like you hear all these reviews about a series and you know oh, what's really like so you go read the first book for free you borrow it in the um, kindle unlimited and you go read it and you're like well that's not too bad what happens with the other ones and then you can decide whether or not you want to go buy the series or you can keep the kindle unlimited thing going <clears throat> but I think it's like 10 bucks a month. And I was like, yeah, I really don't want to pay that. I'd rather use this as a time to, here's my list of my wish list to read. What books can I go read during that time to determine if I want to purchase the book or if I don't need to purchase the book? You know, that it's a great way to 
clarify. <laughs> so that's really cool. And then um, I placed my grocery order today for delivery. <laughs> this was so funny. I'm like, I have given up understanding why people cannot follow simple directions. And the number of people that have delivered the groceries here to the RV have complimented me on how clear the directions are. And I'm like, well, thank you very much because it's a big park. It's a big resort. You don't want people getting lost. And they're very simple directions. From the moment you leave the, gu the guard gatehouse, this is where you need to go. And you follow this and you turn here and you turn here and you go down here and there we are. And one of the things that I get when they turn onto my street is I'm like on the right hand side, halfway down, there is a house by itself. Immediately past that house is the RV at two two at what was my site whatever my site number is two two zero eight. Yeah, I said immediately past that house is my RV at two two zero eight. So we were. <laughs> I love it when I know when people are getting close, right? So I tell Zephy to get on patrol. She gets up there and she's like standing there looking at, and you always know when a car car and she'll sit there. You know when the car's close by because they always slow down as they're like trying to read the numbers on the curb from the driver's side. <laughs> it was really funny. She stands up and she kind of just like looks down at them and says, well, what do you think you're doing? Well, you're stupid. You're and then she like looks and sees them driving past. And that's when I know I've got to go look out the window. So I watch them. I go, do you think that's the person who's delivering to us today, Zef? Well, this guy drives down the street, does a U-turn at the end of the street. He comes back to the house. There's two houses near the corner. Um, three, two, three, three. There's three houses from the corner. So he goes, so instead of checking the number that is painted on the curbing, he stops in front of the first house on our right. So and we immediately have the house on the left that's sitting by itself. And then there's us. Then there's an empty lot, an empty site. And then there's this other house. So he stops in front of that house. And I see him get out, open up the trunk. And the next thing I see him with all these bags. And he's going up to deliver it to a house where there is nobody in that house right now because there's snowbirds. And I, so I step out of the RV and I call him and say, excuse me, over here. And he's like, oh. <laughs> and I'm like, I know that you pulled out your phone and you checked the directions. And you didn't even look for the RV. Because you just drove on past and turned around and went to some house, random house. <laughs> I'm like, really? So what would have happened if I got the things I my thing have been delivered and I go out and take a look and go, yep, no, there's nothing there. That would have been an interesting one because it was frozen food in there. So no ice cream, though, no ice cream, no, just frozen foods. Um, and so he brings it all over and goes, oh, I'm sorry. He says, he says, I said, I didn't. And he didn't even, he didn't even, he just said, I didn't. And I'm just like, yep. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, it is written on there very clearly when you turn onto the street, about halfway down on the right-hand side is a house sitting by itself. Immediately past that is an RV. That is where we are. Yet he's trying to deliver to a house. House RVs look very different. <laughs> so it's, um, he's not going to get a good rating on the directions on that one. Your ability to follow directions, yeah, that ain't going to be a five-star review, sorry. <laughs> it will be a four-star review because he got me everything. And um, the stuff that he picked as um, substitutes, because you have to approve the substitutes, are all good. The fruit looks good that he that he picked out for me. The vegetables look good that he picked out for me. So everything looks good except for being able to follow a simple direction that says immediately past the house halfway down the street on the right-hand side is an RV. That's where we are. <laughs> so, house RV, they look very, very different. Anyway, um, so, that was my um, that was my good laugh for the dance. <laughs> yeah, what what can I say? I had one woman who who berated me one time. She was so rude. She said. You need to let people know that the directions bring you to this particular number within the within the park, which is miles away from where you are. And I'm like, well, that's a big exaggeration. <laughs> and she says, she says, I had so much trouble finding this place. I said, well, did you actually look at the directions that were written? Are you? Did you actually look at the directions that were written under the delivery instructions? Of course, I looked at. I said, well, if you had looked at those, you wouldn't have ended up at 1305 or whatever it was. 
wherever the GPS is taking us there because I know the GPS gives you the wrong directions, which is why listed in there underneath the direction, underneath the delivery directions is the exact directions that you need from when you leave the guardhouse at the front. Well, you need to let people know and all that. I said, okay, that's fine. Thank you very much for letting me know. And <laughs> she storms off and got in her car. <laughs> we, watched her, we watched her go up and down the street like five times before she finally stopped in, in front of the house and came and before she stopped in front of Sparkles and, and made our delivery. Yeah, we're standing there watching her go back and forth and Zephy's just sort of like watches her come back slows she slows down in front of in front of us or every time like looking and then she drives off again and I said, I said what do you think she's doing and Zephy looks at me and looks back out there as I say well I don't know <laughs> so it's very entertaining when you put specific directions under delivery directions for um, the DoorDash or the Instacart to see how many people will say to you, and most of them, like probably about 95% of them have said, these are great directions. And then you get those few that just grumble about how they can't find the place, the numbers aren't very clear, there were no directions on how to get there, they forgot what the guardhouse told them, because <laughs> you can see them on the map. There's a, if you have never had a delivery done, there's actually a little map and you can follow them and see where they're going and everything else. And we had one guy that like circled the entire park three times, you know, three times, he was going back past the guard house before he finally made it here. And I'm just sort of like, the direction, you know, and people just don't think the direction, the delivery directions are in there for a reason. Um, you know, if you're delivering stuff, look for delivery directions. Has the person been kind enough to tell you, when you get to the guard house, when you get to the um, guard house, this is where you need to go. I mean, it makes it so much simple. If 95% of the people that deliver to my RV can find it with the directions listed, why can't the other five? <laughs> anyway, enough about that. I'm off. We're going to go take a DOG for a WALK. Oops, the ears just went. <laughs> Actually, that would have gone the other way, but I can't twist my wrists that way. Yeah, her ears just went back towards me like WALK. I know that word. But she's trying not to look like she's listening. And if she's trying to look like she isn't listening she shouldn't have her ears facing backwards <laughs> but anyway we're out of here for the evening have a super fantastic sparkling evening we'll catch you guys back here tomorrow morning for tune up tuesday hey conera